let's see. A third device. We'll do more than devices eventually. Let's just keep burning through them here. Oh, and I was going to make one of these. I didn't get one made. Let's, uh, let's measure pressure again. A barometer. Surely there's not need for another one. Yes, there is. And this one is different. Okay. Since I don't have one, let's imagine, you've probably all done this. Why would you have done this? Let me think for a second. When have I done this in my life? Maybe with a fish tank. Let's imagine you have a, a tube with a lot of water in it, all right? You fill it all the way to the top. It's like if you don't ask for room when you get coffee, okay? All the way to the top. And then you have um, a, a, a thingy here like this, a Petri dish, also full of water, all right? Uh, is the P and the P minus ATM? Yeah, so this is absolute um, gauge in atmosphere. That's definitely correct. Uh, so say you took this thing, you know, and there's like no bubbles in it, and you like flip it over and you lift it up, and you do a bunch of stuff to get the situation where you have the tube in here and it's still got the liquid in it. Ah, like that. That's a barometer. So when do you do that? I've done that many times in my life. I just can't think of why. You don't want any bubbles, some magic trick with an egg maybe. I'm not sure. So think about that and let me know. So next year it'll be a good story, not a rambling. Oh my God, I'm so done with that. <laughs> Let's see, I don't know. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, oh, you want to know what this is, right? So uh, the one minus ATM, this is the gauge pressure. Yeah, it measures the gauge pressure. There you go. Um, no, I don't know. Okay, I'm moving on. Barometer, I'll fix it in the break and we'll all love each other, okay? Okay, here's the barometer. It's got fluid all the way to the top, right? So let's just ask ourselves the question, uh, what is the pressure at the top? Right. I think that's what I want to ask. Um, yeah, so let's say up, right up to here. Right. So what is, this isn't what you measure with a barometer yet, but we're going to get there. Uh, P top. What is the pressure at the top of this thing? So we've lifted up a column of water. It's going up in the air. We don't know why. But, I mean, I'm going to tell you why. And we have atmospheric pressure here, okay? How are we going to figure out the pressure at the top? Oh, we're going to use this equation that we've been using all week. It's the only equation. <laughs> right. So we just say, okay, well, we want to know the pressure here. But we know it here. We're looking for here. So it'd be easier to treat this as sort of the top number and say we've solved for PATM already. Let's put atmospheric pressure, the place we know, the bottom of the column, on that side of the equation, and say it equals the pressure at the top plus the density of the liquid times gravity times how high we went. Same old thing we keep doing over and over again. Okay? Um, and we would get some number. Right? So we could say, okay, well, then the pressure at the top, let's just pull this over there and say the pressure at the top is uh, the atmospheric pressure um, minus rho g d. Okay, so there's something interesting about that equation. Uh, um, okay, well, not that, the equation to the left of that with the manometer. Yeah, okay, I'll get, I'll get to that question during the break because I'll know I'm lost. Okay, so what we have here is something interesting though. The pressure at the top is atmospheric pressure minus rho GD. Okay, so the uh, liquid has a constant density, can't change that. Uh, gravity is a constant, can't change that in the lab, but D, I can make D as big as I want, right? I can get a longer test tube, I can get a 10 meter test tube, fill it with water, have a giant petri dish. Eventually, what's going to happen to this term? This is going to become negative, right? And can you have negative pressure? No, you cannot have negative pressure. Pressure is always positive. I mean, you cannot have negative absolute pressure. <laughs> Okay, um, so, uh, so what happens? So if D is large, uh, P top can't be negative. So 
So you create a vacuum. So then it looks like this. So basically you have your uh, thing here, and if the conditions are just right, then it's too heavy. Basically, atmosphere can't lift it. It looks like that. So it actually does fall down. There's no air in there. There's no gas in there. It's just a vacuum. Okay. So here you have a vacuum, and here you have P, atmosphere. And if you want to think of sort of a physical reason, it's that uh, P atmosphere can't uh, lift the fluid column. Because right, let's think about it physically for a minute. What's pushing this column up is the pressure times the cross-sectional area of the tube. So that's a certain force. And that force can only match so much weight of the column. You can say, what if you made the tube bigger? OK, the force is bigger, but now the weight of the column is bigger. Right? They both scale with the area, so that doesn't help you. Basically, atmospheric pressure can only lift so much of a fluid depending on its density. Then eventually it will fall down. Eventually there'll be a vacuum there. And once you put a vacuum there, then you have made a manometer. Congratulations. So let's now look at how a manometer, I'm sorry, a barometer really works. Okay. So then the actual equation you'd use for a barometer looks like um, this. Let me draw it again. La 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 la. Oh, it doesn't look like that. Okay. Like this, barometer. And then if you want to measure pressure, now we say, okay, where did the barometer go? What's going on here? Right? Well, this is zero up here. What are we measuring? We're measuring the pressure here. Barometers are mostly used to measure you know, atmospheric pressure, whatever they're exposed to. Somebody's asking, are we still going to have pledge problems for next week? Uh, you need to like read the announcement. Yeah, there is a pledge problem out right now. <laughs> it's due Tuesday. Yes, so there is a pledge problem. It's waiting for you on Canvas. You should check out Canvas sometime. Um, so atmosphere pressure here, this can't do it, it lifts that one. So now, this is it. I'm sorry, I'm being mean. There's a pledge problem, I'm sorry. Everyone. Everyone's in shock. Um, this is 125, right? Am I in the right class? Okay, make sure I didn't wander in the wrong class because everybody's uh, confused. Um, what's the pressure here? Let's apply the equation, we keep applying. The pressure there, we know, is P atmosphere, right? What's the pressure at the top? Zero this time. Whoa. There's nothing up there. Plus rho GD. Okay, so now this is getting interesting. This is getting kind of special here. Oh, I don't know. All right. So the pressure uh, here uh, equals rho GD. All right. So this is basically a way to measure. Uh, so this is our first absolute pressure measurement, okay? Right. The first absolute pressure measurement, because we don't have a gauge situation, because there's only one pressure, right? We're not subtracting it from some other pressure. Now, ironically, it's absolute, and it's usually used to measure atmospheric pressure. Kind of ironic. But really, this could be connected to any, any object or any other, you know, you could have this connected to something else with a tube, and you could use a barometer to measure anything. But generally, it was invented. Its purpose is to measure atmospheric pressure, uh, absolutely. Right. So let's think about uh, how it would work. Like if we ran some numbers here. So say atmospheric pressure is 101.325 newtons per meter squared. All right. And let's say we're going to use what liquid should we use? What's the most common liquid that's widely available that we know the density of very well? Water, sweat and tears. Oh, no water. 1,000. 9.8. How big would the barometer have to be? Mm, calculate, calculate. Well, that can't be right. I said 10 meters. That, surely that's an approximation. Is it 10 exactly? I don't want to do the calculation. It's roughly 10 meters. The one over 1,000 is like 100. Okay, 100 divided by 10 is 10. Okay, so it's roughly 10 meters. That's really big, right? The tube would have to be all the way to the ceiling of this building. So that's not a very useful instrument, okay? So most instruments that you deal with uh, uh, don't use water. They use what liquid, what's the highest density liquid we can possibly get our hands on, although you shouldn't get your hands on it. 
mercury exactly. So these, it's usually a mercury barometer, right? So a number to have in your head, or to be, I mean, we will give it to you on an exam, but a number, the density of mercury instead of 1,000 is 13,534, um, right? And then that drops the depth that it takes to have atmospheric pressure and not be able to lift the column down to like 0.76 meters. So, you know, like this, okay? So that's why we use mercury a lot in pressure measurements is because it's heavy. Uh, if we didn't, these things would be ridiculously big, okay? 